Hi, and welcome back to SDRTK. Today, I'm going to take a look at a comparison that a number of you have asked for in the comments. It's going to be the Rode Pod Mic versus the Shure MV7X. Let's check them out. After becoming available about two years ago, the Rode Pod Mic has been a popular choice with content creators. And it's not a wonder, at the $100 US price point, with excellent build quality, very good audio clarity, as well as a look that many people like to include in their videos, their streams. This microphone really has taken a hold in the marketplace, but there have been many offerings that have come up in that price point, and we have the Shure MV7X being released this year with some significant upgrades to the XLR capability of the microphone versus its predecessor. But it is in a slightly higher price point, and I've had a few people say, you know, is it an upgrade? Is it something I should look at as an upgrade from the pod mic? And I'm not so sure about that. Based on build quality, both are excellent. Uh, based on tone, they are different. And so that's what we're really gonna take a look at today. So in this video, we're going to listen to both microphones through a variety of conditions. We'll listen to them both connected directly up to the Focusrite Scarlett 8i6 without any sort of EQ or compression processing applied. Then we'll listen to both of them through the ART voice channel. It has a tube preamp. We'll again use the preamp only. I won't engage any of the processing on the channel strip. And then we'll listen to both microphones through the DBX286 preamp only. Again, we'll bypass all of the processing. So you can get an idea how different preamps will turn these microphones into perhaps a little bit of a different animal than what we think they are. Then we'll go ahead and we'll actually apply some processing. Once again, both microphones into the Focusrite Scarlett 8i6, and we'll use some plugins to apply processing to the microphones. Then we'll listen to them both through the ART voice channel with some tuning applied in the processing section of that channel strip. And finally, we'll listen to them again through the DBX286 with processing applied through that channel strip. To give you a really good idea of how either of these microphones is gonna perform under a variety of conditions. I'll also include a few physical tests just basic things that are important if you're using this in an application where you may have to handle the microphone or you may be uh, different distances away from the microphone. So we'll include that as well. So let's get to it. And so starting out on the Focusrite Scarlett 8i6, I have the pod mic connected directly to channel one. I have the gain set at four o'clock. And again, I'm not applying any processing EQ compression to this microphone. This is the kind of sound you get. I think from my monitoring, we can tell that it's quite presence forward. It has a very clear tone. And uh, that's something we've come to expect from the pod mic. Now I switched over to the MV7X. This is going into the second channel, the mic pre on the uh, Focusrite Scarlett 8i6. And here I have the gain set at three o'clock. So it needs a little bit less gain than the pod mic to achieve the same level. And I've, I've tried to basically balance them out I really have only about a half a dB difference in terms of what's set up in the recording. So this really gives an idea of whether or not um, either microphone needs a lot more to drive them. But I would say the pod mic definitely needs more gain than the MV7X. And it partially has to do with the impedance variance between the two mics. But again, now we're back on the pod mic. This is the sound of the pod mic. And uh, you know, if, if you like a more presence forward sound, this may be for you. And now back on the MV7X. And with this, if you want a little more uh, warmth to the tone, maybe a little thicker sound, this microphone might lend itself to that a little bit more. Now let's go ahead and switch these over to the ART voice channel, which is a tube preamplifier. Okay, so now I have the Rode Pod mic connected up to the ART voice channel. I have all the processing disabled here. So compression is turned off, uh, de-essing automatically off with that. The expander is off, uh, bypass the EQ no low cut filter, uh, but this of course is a tube preamp. So we have a little bit of saturation happening when uh, I have it connected into here. And just to give you an idea of the difference between using this type of preamp versus what you get out of a built-in uh, preamp on a, an interface like the Scarlett 8i6 that tend to be just a very, very neutral, very clean preamp. So if you wanna get a little bit of coloration of your microphone and you like to use a tube amp, this is what you get without applying any sort of tonal shaping or dynamics processing uh, through a tube amp uh, uh, like the ART voice channel. Okay, now I've set up the MV7X through the ART voice channel, so a tube preamp. And I have this running, of course, with no processing. You see I have the uh, compression turned off. I uh, de is automatic with that. Uh, expansion is turned off as well. I bypass the EQ, no, no uh, low cut filter. So this is just going into the preamp here. It's a tube preamp, but we're driving it so we get a little bit of saturation. 
but I do have the voltage set on high to give you a little bit of a cleaner sound that's more within spec of the tube as opposed to undervolting it to get a little more coloration. And so this is kind of the tone you get uh, with uh, the MV7X through a preamp uh, that is a tube style. Definitely gives it a little bit of a different sound from uh, certainly from my monitoring versus the uh, 8i6. And uh, it's pretty common to uh, use, again, a different type of preamp to, uh, to get a uh, slightly different tone and, and coloration to the sound. So, uh, you know, if you're interested in using that type of a preamp with the MV MV7X, this will give you an idea of, uh, of what you can expect. Now I've gone ahead and connected up the pod mic to the DBX286. You can see that I have the processing bypass turned on. So even though there are some lights here happening with the ESSER, that is all bypassed at this point. I have the uh, gain set to about three o'clock here. Uh, and you see I'm getting a reasonable amount of signal through here. So um, DBX286 can drive the pod mic without too many issues. Uh, this is more of a solid state style preamp in here, just to give you an idea of what this sort of outboard gear would be like using it as a preamp for the pod mic. Uh, versus the ART voice channel with the tube and the Focusrite Scarlet 8i6. And now I have the MV7X connected into the DBX286. You can see I have the processing bypass selected here, so nothing is happening with the expansion and that even though it lights up, the processing is bypassed. So we're just going into the preamp on the DBX286 to give you an idea of how this type of preamp will drive the MV7X. I think for my monitoring, it sounds like it handles this microphone without any problem. Does it uh, sound any different than the tube saturated version on the ART voice channel or the preamps that are directly built into the Scarlet 8i6? Again, the coloration of preamps is one of the things a lot of people, particularly in voiceover, like to uh, consider for dialogue application. And um, so it can make a difference. So let me know in the comments if you like the, uh, the preamp uh, with no processing from the, uh, from the 8i6 or from the voice channel or uh, from the DBX286. And I am finally using the Focusrite Scarlet 8i6 again. I'm just going to use it for a few minor handling tests on these microphones before we go over to the processed audio demonstration. So now we're on the, uh, on the pod mic and I'll just tap on the boom arm. And you know, this is not a handheld microphone, but you may have it on a boom and you wa might want to move it around. So it's important to know how much it picks up. Let's go to the MV7X and uh, same thing. I'll go ahead and tap on the boom arm. And that should give you an idea of how much that picks up. I mean, both are definitely going to pick up noise when you move them around, unless you're planning on using some kind of uh, noise reduction uh, uh, processing, perhaps. Possibly a high-pass filter will help you out with that as well, and we'll check that out in the processing section. But uh, that's the handling noise on both. For both these microphones, I've actually been at about 8 inches away from, from each of them, so that's kind of the working distance we're looking at here. Uh, when when you consider a microphone also, it's like if you move around a lot, you want to wonder if it's going to change or color the sound a lot. So again, on the pod mic, and as I move around, I'm getting a little closer now. I'm at about three inches away from the microphone, and I'm backing up I'm about eight inches, back to about a foot away from the microphone. So as you move around, as you're talking more directly into it, a little bit more across it or away, that'll change the coloration of this microphone. Now we'll go to the MV7X. And on the MV7X, same thing, I've been about eight inches away, and as I move closer to it, now you can hear the difference in the sound that that's going to make. Now I'm about three inches away, and now I'll move around a little bit. I'll speak more directly into the microphone. Now I'll turn across axis a little bit, move it back to about a foot away. And this is a difference in sound you can expect from these two mics. And again, this is important if you're in a situation where you're not really close miking it, where you want to be able to move around. Maybe you're streaming or you're recording with an acoustic instrument and you don't want to boom it directly right into your into your face. So just something to consider. A couple of other considerations with these microphones, of course, is going to be how they handle plosives and how they deal with background rejection from a keyboard, especially for those of you that game stream. So I'm on the pod mic here, and uh, in terms of plosives, people, people, because, because. And again, that is at a, a working range of, I'm about six inches away there. This distance here, eight people, people, because, because. I think it handles it fairly well. I mean, we're not using pop filters here. And, you know, in a, in a video situation, it's more common not to use them. If we were doing audio recording, perhaps a pop filter would be a standard here. Uh, let's check out the MV7. Now we're on that. People, people, because, because. And that's me at about eight inches away from the microphone again. Let's get a little closer. People, people, because, because. And yeah, I mean, uh, both microphones do have a windscreen, have a, a, a filter on them. The MV7X is external. The pod mic is internal, so we don't see it. Both do a, a kind of a similar job, I think, in terms of out of the box. So 
Again, if you need pristine recordings, pop filters in order with pretty much every microphone. But if you're going for a look on a live stream or a video like this, then uh, you want to know how it's going to work this way. Now, in terms of uh, keyboard uh, rejection here, now I'm typing away on a keyboard. And uh, just to give you an idea of uh, what that's going to be like. And, um, you know, it's going to pick up some of the noise in the background. Both of these are dynamic, so they do a pretty good job of rejecting. Now we'll go over to the MV7X. And once again, I'm typing on the keyboard in the background just to see how much of that it picks up. And so it'll give you an idea if there's any difference, if you hear a difference between the two in terms of uh, the background noise they pick up. And so this is a processing demo. We're directly into the uh, 8i6 with the pod mic here. Gain still at 3 o'clock. And uh, I've created a bit of a processing strip here using Isotope Neutron 3. So first we put an equalizer in here and I've warmed up the low end a little bit. I've cut out some of the resonant frequencies here as well, uh, as well as giving a general profile shape of up and down. Again, a kind of a little reminiscent of what you might do with a Poltec. Uh, cleaned up a little bit of the mid-tones here, just the nasaliness, a little bit of this microphone, a little bit for DSing, very minor and uh, then just gradually bringing the air back up a little bit towards the end. So that's what I've done with EQ here. Uh, nothing absolutely crazy, but just kind of evening out the microphone sound a bit. I've added a bit of compression here, attack of five milliseconds, release of 150 with a ratio of 3.5. So nothing crazy here. Have the uh, knee adjusted here a little bit as well. So softening that up. And, uh, but again, nothing, nothing entirely crazy. Uh, and then I also added a bit of an exciter in here, a very minor addition, uh, kind of favoring the tube side. I have it mixed as well here to about 56 uh, of tube saturation versus the balance 44 direct signal. So not a, not a fully wet or dry signal here. And uh, just to give it a little bit of saturation in terms of tube presence to add some of those harmonics in. And so this is a, an example of what you could do with processing to kind of even out the tone of the pod mic. Now let's uh, change it over and we'll listen to uh, what we can do with the MV7X. And now we're on the Shure MV7X. I have, again, created a little bit of a channel strip for processing here using Neutron 3. Uh, in the equalizer, again, I've given just a little bit of a boost at the bottom. Uh, very, very minor with this microphone. More really in terms of controlling resonances here in the room. I've also tried to uh, just, just soften up a little bit of the mid-tone, not too much. And I've tried to add some air with a shell filter up at the top. Again, a very minor uh, little surgical cut here for uh, de-essing. Uh, and of course, this one has a low-pass filter applied as well. Um, then in terms of the compressor, uh, really trying to do exactly the same thing here. Didn't want to really change the dynamics uh, of either microphone uh, too much with compression for, for this test. Um, and the exciter, uh, once again, a little bit of tube saturation here. Uh, mix in this case, I really only have 40% with the... Uh, with the exciter versus 60% without. Uh, just again, to give this microphone a little bit, I don't think it needs quite as much as the uh, as the pod mic to get uh, a little bit of saturation and warmth going on. So again, this is uh, my idea of some basic processing on the MV7X uh, to be fairly transparent, not really trying to change the tone of the microphone in a, in a really significant way. Now let's listen to uh, some processing through the ART voice channel on the pod mic. So I have it connected in here and uh, you can see I have the compression turned on about three and a half to one, uh, give or take. Very soft compression again on this uh, channel strip. Uh, a little bit of DSing. I have the, uh, the expander turned on here again to roll off those low sounds below my voice, but also to help even out the dynamics as I turn back and forth. Uh, you know, and that's, ha that's helpful if you're not always in one position looking right at the microphone. Uh, can give you a little bit more even tone. Uh, proximity effect is, of course, different on all mics, but this gives you some idea anyways. Now, I've also uh, added in here the EQ, and uh, basically what I've done is tried to control some of that, what I think is a little bit overboosted out of the box in the, uh, the pod mic, uh, control a little bit of the nasaliness, and I've tried to warm up the bottom end a bit. But bear in mind the response on the pod mic, it, uh, it uh, doesn't really have a lot of low end right out of the box, so I haven't bothered with a low cut here. I don't think it's necessary with the pod mic. Um, it's almost like Rhodes pre-applied that for us. Uh, but I have boosted a little bit of the bass in that 150 hertz range to just warm this up a bit. Now, of course, I can turn that up. I can start to add more and more warmth into this microphone. Uh, you got to be careful. Really, you never EQ by just adjusting one dial and hoping to make drastic changes. It has to be about a balance. So I recommend uh, you know trying to keep things sort of as neutral as possible, um, just enhancing the tone rather than drastically altering the tone of the microphone. But nonetheless, uh, if you want to build a, you know, a broadcast FM sound for this mic, 
um, you can you can certainly do that with uh, with these hardware options as well as plugins. And uh, I'll have videos in the future looking at uh, how to process with outboard gear and and uh, how to combine outboard and inboard gear to get uh, some really uh, some really nice tones. So look for that coming up. But for this video, I just want to give you an idea of uh, sort of a basic process for a channel strip on the uh, on the pod mic um, with a tube preamp, if that's uh, the way you want to go. And so now I've applied some processing with the MV7X into the ART voice channel. Uh, so looking at it here, I've added the low cut filter to get a little bit of a roll off happening here, kind of below that 80 hertz area. It's a very gentle, it's only six dB per octave. Um, and then the uh, ratio here at about three and a half to one, very mild compression here. This is a pretty transparent uh, compressor on this unit. Uh, DSing here as well. Um, expander connected up. Uh, the idea here again, uh, roll off things that are below my voice tone, but to also boost the lower end of my uh, voice so that you know if I turn away from the microphone, it doesn't uh, doesn't really alter the sound as much. This is really useful again if you're at a, any kind of working distance and you like to move around during your shots. Um, we also have uh, the EQ enabled here as well. And uh, what I've done is really just tried to give a little bit of extra clarity on this microphone, remove a little bit of nasaliness, a little bit of boxiness. Uh, mild boosts in the low end and uh, kind of to give you a very natural sort of sound as much as uh, with processing. Now, of course, if you want a little thicker sound, you can bring up that bass and I'll uh, bring that up uh, so you can hear, uh, you know, just the uh, effect of adding the bass, uh, bass boost here. It's at uh, 150 hertz I have this set at. But uh, the thing is, is that you got to be careful. You can't really adjust only one without the other and expect to get good sound. So, you know, what I like to do is set it up to be fairly natural. And, uh, you know, if I want to create a really thick FM sound, well, I'd go ahead and start up from scratch to do that. And, um, you know, you'd be interested if you see in a future video, I'm going to go through how to do processing with, uh, with onboard, you know, inboard and outboard hardware and software, just to really give you, um, you know, an idea of flexibility of, of tone and uh, from, from pretty much a variety of microphones. But the MV7X is a pretty wide frequency response, so it's fairly friendly to, to processing, I find. Um, you know, it does have some uh, some tonal characteristics. Uh, sure, as given, it certainly tried to increase the clarity, but also warm it up a little bit. Um, and so, so it does have a tendency to go in that direction. But uh, this is uh, again just a processing demo. My uh, my setup for you on the ART Voice channel uh, with the MV7X. So now I have the pod mic hooked up to the DBX286, and I've engaged some processing. You can see I've applied a little bit of compression here, uh, just to uh, just to even out the tones a bit. Uh, a little bit of DSing as well. Uh, this microphone is very presence forward, tend to be a little bit on the sharp side sometimes, so DSing is important. Um, but what's really interesting here is in terms of the enhancer. With this microphone, of course, very little enhancement on the high end, doesn't really need a lot of boost in that range. But the um, the low end enhancer, you know, the way the DBX286 works is it boosts at about 80 hertz and that cuts at around 200 hertz, all with the low end enhancer. And you see I have it set very low here. And that's because with the frequency response of the pod mic, with it really not giving you anything too much below about 120 hertz, when you start increasing this, I'll just turn up the enhancer, and you hear it starts to get kind of boxy because there really isn't a lot to add in here in terms of the low range. So the DBX-286, just turn it back down a little bit here for you. The DBX-286 is probably not the best choice for the pod mic. Uh, and in general, the DBX286 works well, typically with microphones that have a very wide, flat frequency response. So um, the, the pod mic on the DBX286, maybe you like the sound, maybe not. For me, uh, I think um, the flexibility of a processor like the ART voice channel, where I have a lot more control over the equalization, is better for the pod mic. Uh, but nonetheless, this is the pod mic uh, processed through the DBX286. Okay, so now you're listening to the MV7X through the DBX286. And uh, you can see I've set up a bit of a processing chain here as well. Um, a little bit of, of uh, compression again here just to even things out as well as the expansion at the end to uh, bring up those uh, points where I'm a little bit more quiet or maybe where I turn away from the microphone a little bit to even that out. Um, a little bit going on here as well, uh, of course, with the S-ing. What's very interesting here is the uh, way the uh, enhancer works. Uh, of course, um, you know, I've applied a little bit of additional high enhancement to bring a little more clarity to this microphone. It's not quite as bright as a pod mic, and I, I kind of think that's important for clarity. So I brought a little more of that up. And uh, also on the low end, this is a little more flexible. Right now, I've set this up not to be overly processed, just to give you kind of a little bit of enhancement of the tone. Uh, but uh, we can certainly boost that. I'll go ahead and roll up that, that uh, low end boost. 
so you can get an idea of how that thickens up the sound. Now you have to be careful not to overboost anything with these, uh, you know, with these uh, controls uh, on the DBX286 because it's not granular. So you're going to get a lot of of change in the profile the way uh, the the engineers have intended this to work. Doesn't give you that quite the same level of control as the uh, as the ART voice channel. But nonetheless, uh, this is the MV7X. I've set up a little bit of a uh, uh, channel processing here for you to listen to and uh, see if uh, this might be a microphone you'd want to use with that type of uh, channel strip. And now finally back on both microphones without any processing directly into the Scarlett 8i6. And I uh, hope this gives you an idea of the different sound of the two microphones. Definitely have a characteristic tone. I again wouldn't say that one is really an upgrade over the other. I think it comes down to more of the type of tone you're looking for. You might disagree. Let me know in the comments below. Now, uh, again, with these microphones, I think both are in a similar price point. The MV7X is a little bit more expensive, which is why some people might think of it as an upgrade from the pod mic. Uh, don't look at dollars only. It really has to come down to, is the tone what you want? Is the build quality what you want? And ultimately, the look may be important to you as well. So consider everything when you're thinking about changing your microphone. A lot of times, it's not so much about getting a new microphone. It's maybe about adding a little bit of processing maybe about changing the preamp you're using. And I hope this gives you an idea of these two microphones and whether one might be more appropriate for what you're looking for over the other one. If you want a detailed review of either one, check out the playlist or one of the videos on the screen. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.